Hello and welcome to the interview on France 24. We are here in Paris and with me today is Mr. Fayez al Sarraj, who is Prime Minister of the Government of National Accords. Welcome. Thank you. Can you tell me about relations between France and Libya? Have they improved? You accused France of supporting General Haftar. Today, we met in the Elysee, President Macron, we had a positive meeting. President Macron asserted his support, his continued support for our legitimate government. And for our part, we reasserted some basic principles, compliance with the rule of law, our right, legitimate right to defend ourselves against this attack by General Haftar, the need for his forces to return to where they came from. We have always said that we call for peace. Those who have destroyed the peace process are General Haftar and not our government. So we are prepared to return to the peace process as soon as possible. And what was Macron's response? He showed great understanding. We talked about the peace process, some in some detail how to prepare for this new stage in the peace process and this peace process will be different after the attack on the 4th of April we said that we have to condemn this attack very firmly because it's a coup an attempt to take power by weapons by force the president responded positively. And what made you think that France was actually backing General Haftar? Did you have any proof of that? The relationship of some countries and General Haftar is very clear. Nobody has any doubt about this. What we expect from France a country that is a friend of Libya is to take a clearer position in the next uh, period, to say things clearly, to express its views clearly. Over the last three years, we were in touch during negotiations with General Haftar, but unfortunately, General Haftar was preparing his attack. We were very close to a political solution. We were expecting compliance with the Abu Dhabi agreement, but unfortunately, this stupid attack by General Haftar has destroyed all his political efforts, which might have enabled us to find a solution. Some say that General Haftar actually broke a promise that he made during the last rounds of negotiations at Abu Dhabi. The last meeting in Abu Dhabi, with, with the, in the presence of Hassan Salame, we managed to agree on some basic principles, uh, elections, an end to hatred speech and other principles. Um, we held, we had planned a meeting on the 25th or the 26th of March. We were due to talk about a government of national unit, unity to manage the transitional period. But the attack on, the April, on April the 4th proved that General Haftar is preparing for this attack and has broken his promises. So you're saying that you never gave General Haftar's forces approval to enter Tripoli. This is what General Ismari said. The spokesman for Haftar's forces. I don't know him. I don't know this gentleman. It doesn't matter anyway. We had agreed on avoiding a military escalation uh, the, to stop hate speech, and we said that by trying to enter Tripoli it would not be a walk. Did you speak by telephone or at Abu Dhabi? The forces in Tripoli said they would defend 
Tripoli, and unfortunately, uh, General Aftar doubted this, and uh, we now have his answer. So how do you explain the choice to act militarily on behalf of General Haftar's? Because is it his own belief, in fact, it's your belief, that uh, a solution can be found without using weapons? Quite clearly, he proved that he was not serious during the negotiations during the peace process. He wasn't ready, prepared for the peace process, and that he wanted a coup against the legitimate government. You described the man as being a war criminal. So the question we're now wondering is, are negotiation, future negotiations possible with General Haftar? Yes, I describe it that way because somebody who bombards, who bombs uh, homes of citizens, of civilians, somebody who bombs neighborhoods, somebody who bombs and fires on ambulances, who destroys the infrastructure of a country. How can that person be described in any other way? As I said at the beginning, the peace process after this attack of April the 4th will be completely different, and now we must uh, really, the international community must intervene seriously. Are you, yourself, willing to sit down to negotiate with him? The situation is completely different now. The other side, the people we will be negotiating with, will be different. We should, and this is what I said to President Macron, we need to find an elite, a serious political uh, elite, intellectuals, academics, who really represent the east of uh, Libya, and Mar General Aftar can no longer represent the east of Libya. Our disagreement is not between the east and the west of Libya, between those who want a civilian state and those who want a military government. So, given the current state of affairs, if there are peace negotiations, you would not want General Aftar to represent the east of Libya, is that right? It's the Libyan people who will decide. The people concerned are not important. The political process must continue. But in the meantime, war is still raging in the country, conflict is in the south of the capital, and General Haftar is calling on his forces to keep fighting during the holy month of Ramadan. What do you think of that? The situation is clear. Everything proves that one person with militias, with clear plans to take power by force, to organize a coup against the legitimate government, their aim is clear to find excuses, to find pretexts, to attack us, to say that they're fighting against terrorism. I think nobody has any doubt of our efforts uh, as the national government in the fight against terrorism. We liberated the town of Sirta from terrorists. We have uh, uh, had 763 martyrs, wounded people, amputated people, and these same heroes who are now defending Tripoli. There are friendly countries who are helping us to fight terrorism regarding the militias in Tripoli. When we arrived in Libya, there were over 150 armed groups in Tripoli, whereas today, after our efforts, there are only four or five armed groups which are now integrated into our security and military forces of Libya. And there are also security arrangements approved by the United Nations and applied by these armed groups. The situation uh, is peaceful in Tripoli. Uh, 44 embassies have reopened in Tripoli. We have implemented social and economic reforms which are 
beginning to bear fruit. But it actually seems that General Haftar doesn't seem to see things with the same eye. And I will quote him here. He considers that you have no free will and that you are at the mercy of militia groups who actually control the capital and that you are under their pressure. First of all, what General Aftar says does not interest me, is of no interest to me. He can say whatever he wants. What I'm interested in is the Libyan citizen. We must find solutions to render services to Libyan citizens. Does General Aftar think that he will solve the problems of Libya? Uh, did he solve the problems of Libyans in Benghazi? Did he provide public services in the south of Libya? Uh, he created a, a fitna and he has caused a lot of trouble in the south. He betrayed the inhabitants of the south of Libya. Is that the solution that General Aftar proposes to the citizens of Tripoli? He is dreaming of entering Tripoli. So we spoke about the situation in Tripoli. We said that fighting is continuing even though Ramadan has just started. So what is the situation on the ground? Do you have any figures on the number of victims or displaced persons? There are a lot of uh, uh, victims, a lot of damage. Over 100,000 people have been displaced, homes have been destroyed, and the destruction, destruction of infrastructure has been widespread. Public services have been adversely affected, and the return of certain terrorist cells are taking advantage of the chaos caused by this attack. And there are also problems uh, relating to illegal immigration. Illegal immigration says one of those centers was bombed by the forces of General Aftar. Do you have any figures? There are hundreds of uh, uh, victims. There are over 100,000 displaced people. The situation is difficult, and our forces are united. The forces that support our forces are united. We've had a lot of success. We have stopped the progress of the forces of General Aftar. We have uh, pushed them back. And what about the uh, story that we heard? Apparently, one of your planes was shot down. If you listen to this propaganda disseminated by General Aftar, you could imagine that we sent the plane. Their propaganda is a lie. Their propaganda is lies. So I completely deny this. And what about foreign interference? Some people say that you have support from Qatar, Turkey, and other countries, you have military support from them. Is that true? You must ask the question in a different way. You must approach the question from a different angle. Who received help? Who gave help to General Haftar for years? This question is quite clear. We have already asked the Security Council this question. We want the commission of verifying the facts, of check, uh, checking the facts to shed light on who is supporting, who is financing General Haftar. And I hope the Security Council will take its responsibilities. The United Nations are actually carrying out investigations into the possible involvement of the United Arab Emirates. What do you think of that? We asked the Security Council of the United Nations to invite the Commission for checking the facts to shed light on all these questions so that the Libyan people should know who is helping the people and who is bombing them. And the last question for you. The the political process is quite a difficult one. There are many thorny issues. So would you ever step down? No, I have never envisaged resigning. We have a great responsibility. I'm fighting, and now we are doing our duty in a different area. We must be up to it. Thank you very much for your time, for joining us for our show. I want to thank you, Mr. Siraj, President of the Government of National Accords, and thank you to our spectators for joining us. Stay on France 24.